We want to look at the accounting equation and how it interrelates with financial statements. Now this isn't how a company keeps their books, but it is you, we're using it to show you how the accounting equation interrelates with financial statements. So here we have our accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. So what we have are our or our assets is equal to what we owe and what we own. So what we have either came to the company either through borrowing money, what we owe, or we own it outright. Now we'll see how this accounting equation, assets, liabilities, and equity relates to the various financial statements. So here we have the balance sheet. Assets are on the balance sheet and on the balance sheet alone. The same holds true for liabilities. They are only found on the balance sheet. However, owner's equity is found on several financial statements. So the first financial statement that's related to equity or sub-accounts sub related to equity or is the income statement. Now on the income statement, we only have revenues. So in our example, we're going to be looking at consulting revenue and rental revenue and also expenses. So the income statement is comprised only of revenue and expenses. So revenue minus expenses yields net income. The next financial statement is the statement of owner's equity. We have to prepare the income statement in order to use information from it to begin to, to prepare our statement of owner's equity. So on the statement of owner's equity, we have beginning capital or beginning equity. Um, the example that we're going to be looking at does not have any beginning capital, so that's zero. But it will also increase with any investments by the owner during the current period. So here we have an investment by the owner of the current period. To that, we're going to add net income. Net income would come from the income statement. So beginning capital plus current investments and current net income added together yields a subtotal from which we are going to subtract any withdrawals, which are going to decrease owner's equity. And we'll see that as we go through the example. And that will give us ending owner's capital. I'm just a little abbreviation there. So ending owner's capital. So now let's see how ending owner's capital interplays with the balance sheet. So here we have the balance sheet and as we stated earlier, it has all of the assets. So assets are only found on the balance sheet. Then we have the liabilities. So this is our liabilities associated with this example. And then we have owner's equity and we can see that owner's equity is comprised of owner's capital, which we calculated above in the statement of owner's equity so that our total assets are equal to our total liabilities plus owner's equity. So the financial statements relate to the accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. What we have is equal to what we owe and what we own. So let's look at some transactions. The owner invests in a business and invests cash. So we're going to increase cash. So the account is cash. The amount is $30,000. It was an investment of capital, so equity is going to go up by $30,000. The equity um, is going to wind up the capital account will be both be on the balance sheet and the statement of owner's equity. It's the only account that's found on both places. So every other um, type of account is only on one financial statement, but owner's capital, owner's capital here, and owner's capital here is found both on the balance sheet and the statement of owner's equity. So we can see that our accounting equation is in balance. What we have, our cash, is equal to what we own, our capital. Now the business purchases supplies and for which they're going to receive future benefits. Because it is related to future benefits, the supplies are considered an asset. If it was only related to the current period, it would be considered an expense, but because it benefits future periods, it's going to be considered an asset. 
Now in this instance, we bought supplies the amount of $2,500 and we bought them with cash. So our cash decreased by $2,500, but our asset supplies went up by $2,500. So now we see we changed an asset for another asset. Our total assets remain the same. It's just they're comprised of different things now. We have less cash and we also have supplies. So you can see how it's working with the financial statements, our cash is decreased, and now we have supplies of $2,500. Our assets are $30,000, and our owner's equity is still $30,000. So now we're going to purchase equipment for cash. Equipment also benefits future periods. It's an asset, and so we have equipment in the amount of $26,000, and we used our cash for $26,000. Now, we still have $30,000 in assets, 30000 in assets, but now it's comprised of different elements. We have cash of $1,500, supplies of $2,500, and equipment of $26,000. So now we're opening our business and we're going to purchase some more supplies, but our cash is getting a little low, so we're going to purchase some supplies on credit. Our supplies are going to go up by $7,100, and we're also going to have now our first liability accounts payable of $7,100. So our assets are now equal to what we owe. So this asset is equal to what we owe. So now let's look over here. The assets haven't changed, but now our liabilities are 7100 Our total liabilities and owner's equity have gone up, and so has our total assets have gone up. So now our supplies is 9600 so finally we open our business and we're going to provide services we're going to earn some revenue and our clients are going to pay us in cash so we earn forty two hundred dollars and so our cash increases by forty two hundred dollars and now consulting revenue is a sub equity account and so consulting revenue forty two hundred and we said that all revenue and expenses belong on the income statement so now we're going to have consulting revenue of $4,200 in our income statement. Our cash has gone up by $4,200 and we can see that our owner's capital has gone up as well because now we have the investment by owner and then we have something that changed on our income statement that added to owner's equity. I'm looking, letting you look at this, how it changes um, transaction by transaction, but typically the income statement wouldn't be prepared until the end of the period. But to help you understand and learn how each one of these affects the financial statements, I'm showing you as we go through transaction by transaction. So next, we're going to pay some rent in cash. Now, if the rent, we were prepaying some rent for several months, that would be an asset. But since it's just for the month, it is an expense. So we're paying our rent in cash. So our cash is going down by $1,000. And our rent expense, also a sub-equity account, it's going to be decreasing um, owner's equity. Like consulting revenue increased owner's equity. And that makes sense because when we earn money, our, our wealth, our owner's wealth increases. But when we pay out expenses, our owner's wealth decreases. So that thousand dollars in rent is going to be our income statement. So now we have rent expense of a thousand dollars. Our net income has gone down to thirty two hundred. We can see how that's going to affect owner's equity. We can see how our cash has decreased and our owner's capital has changed. Let's look at our next transaction. We're going to pay our, our employees in cash. So cash is going down by 700. We have salary expense. It's going to be on the income statement. Again, revenue on the income statement, expenses on the income statement only. We can see the income statement now has a $700 deduction for the salary expense. Our net income has changed. Net income on the statement of owner's equity has changed and so has our ending owner's capital. It's changed too as well. So let's look at the next one. We're going to provide services for credit, and we're also going to rent out a portion of our space to the same client for credit. Now, when things happen on credit, they're either on accounts, they're on accounts receivable. So we didn't get cash. We've got a promise to pay in the future. But we are going to recognize the revenue because the transaction happened at the present time, even though we won't be paid until later. So remember, 
our revenue recognition policy. We recognize revenue when it's earned, not when we're paid. So we got a promise to pay. So when we have revenue, either they pay us in cash, like they did up here, or they give us a promise to pay in the amount of accounts receivable. So we can see that our consulting revenue went up, our rental revenue went up, we can also see now that our balance sheet, our accounts receivable went up, and we can tell that our net income has changed, and it's affected owner's equity, so it's affecting owner's capital, so the, what we have is equal to what we owe and what we own, so everything stays in balance. Now, we received our cash from the bill to the, that we sent to the client on our accounts receivable. So cash went up by 1900 and accounts receivable went down by 1900 And so now that hasn't affected anything on the income statement, nor anything on the statement of owner's equity, but it has affected our balance sheet. Our cash has gone up, our accounts receivable has gone down to zero, and so now we're still in balance with our assets are equal to total liabilities and equity. So let's look at our next transaction. Let's look at our accounts payable. So we're going to pay on our accounts payable. So our cash is going to decrease. And so our accounts payable is going are going to decrease too as well. Now just a word about accounts receivable. If this is a transaction between two companies, this company has an accounts payable because it owes money to the other company. But the other company on its books would have an accounts receivable, meaning that they would be looking for receivable. They would be billing this company for the amount the 7100 and we're making a partial payment on that. So one company would have an accounts payable and another company would have an accounts receivable. It just depends upon who owes and who to whom the money is owed to. Last we uh, we lastly we have a withdrawal of cash by the owner. So cash is going to decrease by $200, and also we have withdrawals, and those are found on the Statement of Owner's Equity. It's the only place where it's found, withdrawals. So withdrawals of 200 Statement of Owner's Equity. So now let's see how all of our transactions are interrelated with the financial statement. So here we have our income statement, our consulting revenue, our rental revenue, subtracting out our two expenses, and then we have net income of 4400 Now let's look at the statement of owner's equity. Beginning capital is zero. Investment by the owner was 30000 during the month. Our net income from the income statement, so the income statement is always prepared first, then the statement of owner's equity. So we have $4,400 from the net income. So we have our total increases to owner's wealth during the period, but that's not the entire story because the owner also withdrew $200. And so the ending owner's capital is now $34,200. So let's look at how that relates to the balance sheet. So obviously we needed to do the statement of owner's equity so that we can calculate ending owner's capital. And so then that will go to the balance sheet. So our ending owner's capital on the balance sheet will be the same amount. And, and remember, ending owner's capital is in both the statement of owner's equity and the uh, balance sheet. So here we have what we have, our cash, our supplies, and our equipment, our total assets are 40000 $400. Our accounts payable went down. We made a payment on it, so it's down to $6,200. Our owner's capital from the statement of owner's equity, $3,400. So our total liabilities and owner's equity are $40,400.